Morning, everybody. It's not a dad bod. It's a father figure. I'm getting ready to go to the truck. We gotta go get it ready, get it hooked onto my trailer, and head to Kenora to get ready to be loaded tomorrow. Like I was telling you at the end of yesterday's video, I wanna get there as early as I can so I can get unloaded as early as I can the same day so I can get going towards wherever they need me to go for my reload so I can get a good start on the week. I'm gonna be laser focused here for a while. So let's get to it, let's get to the truck, let's get started up. Let's get those wheels turning. Just packing up my stuff here. Getting ready to go. Christmas stuff being set up. It's beginning. Got a new tree topper for the tree that's going up down here. We have a pencil tree upstairs. We're putting a big tree right in here. Oh yeah, you better believe it. It's Christmas time. Now before the new new viewers jump down my throat from the United States, I'm just going to remind you, Canada, we've already had our Thanksgiving in October, so I know you have Thanksgiving yet before you go full on Christmas. That's okay, you guys can hold off, do your turkey dinner stuff. We've already done that. Up here in Canada, it's, it's full on Christmas time. We got nothing left until Christmas. Mm -hmm. What's up, old blue? You ready to go have some fun? We'll do some trucking or what? Let's get out there. Let's get our stuff in the truck. <sighs> all right. We got old blue warmed up. <laughs> Almost too much. It's hot in here. Turn the heat off for a bit. Oh, man. I'd like to stay home for another few days, but Duty calls. People need their stuff. And I need their money. <laughs> oh, we're not going that far tonight. It's not going to be that far. Okay, so uh, I've got to get everything set up in here. For the most part, I don't need to set up too much because I left my bedding in here. I only slept in here for three nights last night, uh, last week, so it'll be good for another week. We'll wash it next weekend, right? Uh, just gonna get it all organized back there. Get the computer set up so it's ready for when we stop. We're already hooked onto the trailer. It's an empty flatbed. We'll pull that to Kenora and uh, find a parking spot there. A quick stop here in Prada, Manitoba. Just on the way into Kenora. Grab myself a coffee. So this is a pretty popular stop for me. We're uh, east of Winnipeg, but we're west of the Ontario border. It's a pretty popular travel spot along here, or travel stop along here as well for everyone going from cottage country in Kenora, Ontario area back home. You know, it's a pretty nice convenience store. They have Chester fried chicken across the street here at the Esso, which I've gotten before. It's delicious. So it's big parking lot. Lots of trucks can park here. Ah. You probably, you probably recognize the name Prada before, and I show it on the maps every now and then so you know about where I am. I hope that those help give you an idea, sort of, where I'm moving around to, so you can get more of an idea when you see the footage off my dashboard. You can sort of see, oh, so that's what it looks like in that region or in that area or on that highway. I try to bring you into it as much as I can. But speaking of that, we do need to keep moving. I'm gonna go park in Kenora tonight, so I'm ready to go in the morning. So they've repaved this section going through the blast zone here in Northern Ontario that I've been showing you over the past you know, year or so. I guess they must be done blasting. That took a while. It's not a quick process. It must be crazy expensive. I 
the speed limit's way down here. But it looks like they're just cleaning things up and probably won't even notice that it was ha that it happened in a month or two once everything's all cleaned up. We're gonna grab just a little bit of fuel here at the Petro Pass in Kenora. I'll fuel up in the US tomorrow. Just a little splash in the tank just to make sure that I make it down there and don't get too close to empty. But I don't like the risk. It's starting to get colder outside, right? So don't want to take any more risk than I have to, but at the same time, I want to fuel where the fuel's cheaper, which is down south. So I'm going to grab 80 liters. That should do it. I'll just put it on my driver's side here. It'll even out. Ah, so, like you saw there, about a half tank, I got 500 kilometers or 300 and some miles to go tomorrow. I could easily make that on half a tank. It'd get pretty low down, probably right down to uh, about an eighth of a tank, maybe just below a quarter tank. I don't want to run it that low at this in this season, or any time really. I don't want to be on the side of the road because I, I messed up and ran out of fuel. That's never happened to me before yet. And uh, I plan to never let that happen to me. That'd be embarrassing. <laughs> How do I explain that to YouTube? So we're stuck here on the side of the road. <laughs> Ran out of juice. <laughs> hey, it'd get lots of views. I mean, that'd be a great title. Ran out of fuel. Not worth it though, not worth it. So to give you an idea of the price difference between here and like 200 miles that way in the US, just over the border, the price we're paying this week here, I believe, is $1.74 per liter. Just over there in the US, it's $1.54 per liter. That's 20 cents cheaper per liter, and I would buy about 600 liters on a tank of fuel. So that's, that's the huge difference. There's many reasons why that it's there that I've discussed in previous logs before. Taxes are uh, a big portion of that. Carbon tax is a massive portion of that up here in Canada. And, uh, you know, that's why it drives all business and revenues away from here and down there, unfortunately for us. But fortunately for our American neighbors, they get more business this way. Because if you raise the taxes on people and on fuel and on products, all you do is you push away potential buyers of that product. We'll just go somewhere where you're not going to, where we're not going to be charged those ridiculous taxes. Simple as that. We have to buy fuel one way or another. We have no choice. We have to keep moving. It's not like we can just stop. <laughs> so it is what it is. We go where the cheap, we go where the juice is the cheapest. There we go. 21 US gallons. Uh, now let's go find a parking spot. And we'll wait for the morning. If you're wondering about my conversions, yes, that's uh, with all other conversions included. When I convert from US dollars, when I fuel in the US, all the taxes there are included. Still 20 cents a liter cheaper right now. Sometimes it's more. Sometimes it's less, but it's always cheaper down there. They don't have a carbon tax, so that's that's a big one right there. Is this place still under construction or can I get around the back now? Aha, I can get around the back again. closed off last time I was here. Oh, there's somebody else here this time. Oh, oh, I've always been the lone guy here. Now there's somebody else. Okay.
There's a car in that parking spot again. It's a different one this time. Oh, he just started up. That's not good. Shouldn't be parked in the truck parking spots. That guy did it, right? He parked in a car parking spot. It's kind of nice not being the only guy parked here now. There's another driver beside me. That uh, at least tells me that, uh, you know, there's people here, <laughs> right? As for this car parked right beside me, and it started up just as I was talking to you there. I wasn't expecting there to be anyone in there. Last time we were here, there was just an abandoned car there, or maybe someone was sleeping in there. I went and walked past the car now because I had to go check my tires in the back and do my post trip, and as I was walking past, there is somebody in the driver's seat in there. They were just parked there in the truck spot, sleeping, I guess. Maybe the sound of my brakes woke them up. The car doesn't really have a very good muffler, so that could be annoying if they're going to be idling back there all night. Especially when they, they have car spots where they can park. I don't understand. <laughs> Why do you need a full 75 foot spot? Like you, 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 you could park anywhere. Park Walmart. Like anywhere. Why do you pick... There's only four spots here. That's what I mean. Four spots to park. That's it. Four trucks can park here. Now only three can park here. But there are literally thousands of parking spots for cars everywhere around town. Anywhere, everywhere. They took one of the truck spots. <laughs> From a humble truck driver to the internet and to the world, please don't be that person. It's annoying enough when bobtails take up a full 75 foot spot. Ooh, that grinds my gears. <sighs> Especially when they don't need to, when there's a bobtail section, and they go park in a... I'm not going to get into this. We're going to get into a rant. We're not going to get into this tonight. But, uh... It is what it is. <laughs> End of my day. Maybe I'm a little grumpy. I don't know. It just bugs me. But why? Now I'm a little nervous, and why are you parked there? You're not causing trouble there, are you? Side note, just at the end, just as I was about to move over to the other side of the truck, the car slowly drove away. So don't worry, tonight will be a good night. We are safe. I just don't like people I don't know. Or I don't like people parked beside me when I don't know why they're there. Does that make sense? I mean, I don't know why this guy's here either. I'm pretty sure he's here to pick up a load or drop off a load in the morning. I'm pretty sure. I don't know why he's there either. Who are you? But I have a pretty good idea what he's doing here. Some random car in the back dark corner of the parking lot? Not as sure. Not as sure. Gotta be careful out here. <laughs>